We've been watching these guys basically go spear fishing for these oysters. So I thought I would try one. All right, I'll have what, how much? 16? If this video ends now, it's because I got food poisoning and died. Hopefully that's not the case. It's actually pretty good. I'm here in Sinaloa, Mexico to check out one of the world's oldest producing silver districts. I'm gonna be meeting up with Mike Connor. He's the CEO of Vizla Resources. And Vizla has managed to essentially consolidate an entire district. This has never been done before in this region and they're applying modern exploration techniques for the first time. Mike's gonna be taking me underground in a historic silver mine. They've been producing silver there for nearly 500 years. It was started by the conquistadors and we're gonna see what Vizel is doing and what we can expect out of them over the next year. I invested my own money in Vizel last year and I'm excited to see what they have in store for investors and for us on this trip. Mazatlan is located on Mexico's Pacific coast and was first settled in 1531 by the Spanish. Today, the main industries are fisheries and tourism. I'm so pumped to be here for a whole week and awesome. not be in Vancouver where it's raining like a mother all the time right now. It's a lively city. It's a fun city. And fortunately for us, it's only a 45 minute drive from Vizla's project. Great tamal is, Great tamal is corn, ash, and limestone. Really? Really, yeah. And the, the color comes from a tree we call Brazil. The Sinaloa mines are legendary and they've been providing the port here with a near constant stream of silver ever since the Spanish came and started mining it in the 1500s. After checking into my hotel, I meet up with Mike Connert to get ready for the site visit. So when you guys were looking for projects, did you have Mexico in mind specifically, Sinaloa, or were you looking all over the world? How did you end up here? It had always been on our list of, of areas that we were willing to, uh, to look at projects. Yeah. Um, and when we saw the opportunity that's the Panuco district, we, we just uh, had to come down and, and make it work. So, you know, we had, as a group, we had some experience in Mexico, but um, really we were, we were building a, a brand new start here. So this is the first uh, silver specific company I've ever invested into. I'm not a silver expert, mm -hmm. but I've always wondered, do you find many land packages like this? Any sort of silver districts of this scale very often? It, if you do find them, they're usually in a major or a mid-tier. Uh, this is one of the last opportunities that I know of in Mexico to consolidate a district like this that's that's comparable to some of the greats uh, in Mexico, like Zacatecas, Fresnillo, Juan Anato. Um, this is the first time it's ever been consolidated. It's, uh, it's, it's a unique opportunity. So this has been known about for some time, and, and I've actually talked to other people in the space that have tried to consolidate this yeah. in the past. Yeah. And why you guys and why now? How are you able to do it? Well, I think uh, in life it's all about uh, getting yourself ready and being there for, for the right timing. So uh, that's what happened. It was a symptom of uh, low silver prices, $15 silver prices, and uh, certain ownership, um, you know, family dynamics in the ownership uh, category of, of the, you know, the vendors. So if this deal were trying to be done right now, uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't happen. When we head out to site later today, can you give me an overview of what I can expect to see? The things I'd like to point out and make obvious to you is the district scale, it's yeah. very important. Uh, the infrastructure, high grade yeah. uh, and fantastic infrastructure. We're gonna drive off of a four, four lane toll highway onto the property. You're gonna see high tension power. You're gonna see a significant road network. You're gonna see the mill that we have under option. Uh, and as we go underground, uh, we'll help our geologists explain the, the high-grade, uh, significant uh, intercepts of, of high-grade silver underground as well. One of the things that attracted me to Vizela was the size of the land package that you guys put together. This project is massive. It's so big that you need a plane to take it all in. So we found one. 
Bigger minds produce economies of scale. This is important because instead of trying to operate small, marginally profitable mines, Vizsla now has the scale that is required to potentially make a big discovery and hopefully find a very profitable mine. To give us access to these veins, um, you know, it's hard to see on this map, but essentially a lot of these, these veins cross property boundaries multiple times. So we're the first company to have the entire district to explore as a whole. So when you say forces, these are currently producing mines, is that right? That's right. And has anyone ever put together a land packages like this before? Or has it previously been disassembled and it's, scattered it's, around? It's, in modern history, it's been disassembled and scattered around. It's never been consolidated. When was this actually discovered? How long have they been mining this for now? They've been mining this for 450 years. It was discovered by Francesco Diabara. If Vizsla makes the discovery they are hoping to, the company could potentially be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And that is why I invested. Have modern exploration techniques ever been actually applied to it? No, we actually think that there actually hasn't been any exploration techniques to speak of on a district scale. And the reason we say that is because we've made brand new discoveries on this uh, on this vein trend already. So we expect uh, more discoveries to come. Our next stop is the El Coco Mill. In addition to having a four lane highway and high tension power go right through site, a fully permitted mill is a key part of Vizsla's infrastructure. Something that stood out to me looking at Vizsla was the fact that you had a fully permitted milling operation. Um, this is, you know, something you rarely see with a significant land package, mm -hmm. especially a project that is, you know, at the exploration stage. How long would you reckon it takes to permit a mill in Mexico? Uh, it could take years. So when it gets to the point where you want to put this project into production, this could shave off a year, maybe more off the timeline. Absolutely. I mean. It was in production up to about six months ago. It's on care and maintenance. If we so decide, we can put this back into production very rapidly. What's the, the capacity? About 500 tons per day. And is it scalable? Could you grow from there? Absolutely. It's got the footprint. It's got the bones. Uh, if we needed to add more capacity, I'm certain we could do that. All right. Well, let's go underground. Sounds good. On our way to the Mariposa mine, the underground came to us. All right, we just pulled over because we are driving through the animus structure. And you can see up here to my left, all this alteration here. Now, this is a really good sign. You can see the rock is heavily oxidized here. And so that's a good indicator of sulfides, silver, gold, that sort of thing. Anyways, very, very good indicators here. Historic mining targeted the easily available oxidized material. Vizsla's plan now is to use modern techniques to explore below the water table for the previously inaccessible sulfide ore. Local geologist Luis Perilla sees exciting potential here. The oxidation zones and we are entered in the sulfide mineralizations. So the oxidization, it's been mined out and you're drilling underneath it now yeah. to determine the sulfidization zone and, and what's still there? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go have a look and you can point it out to me. Yeah. So Luis, this has been mined for almost 500 years, right? Yeah, right. And this was first mined by the Spanish. Do you know how many times people have been in here and expanded this and when the last time it was being mined was? Yeah, the last time was uh, 30 years ago and uh, they used very, very basic mechanics tools, just rudimentary uh, mining still. You know, the first thing you notice when you come down here is just the scale of it. This is supposed to be an artisanal mining operation. It was mined out about 30 years ago, but you can see this here, this cavern, which is an old adit, where the miners went in and took out the ore. It's probably 20 meters by 10 meters wide. Uh, very unusual to see this uh, on a site visit. Very exciting for Vizsla to have access to this sort of workings. Access to All these type of underground like, workings is rare for an exploration project, and it gives Vizsla an immediate head start on most of its competitors. In, in between, you know, we have uh, banded, uh, banded white and, and gray quartz with sulfurs, mostly uh, ar argentites. 
They provide information that would cost millions in drilling to replicate and should allow Vizsla to work at an accelerated pace. Very high values in silver. Mike Connert spent the better part of a year putting this deal together, and he's got a very clear vision for Vizsla in the coming months. It's been a great site visit. I had an awesome time, but, you know, I'm left wondering what's next for Vizsla. You guys have had a tremendous run over the last month. The share price has more than doubled since I put my money in. What's next? Is there is there still money on the table for investors that want to come in today? Should I start taking profits? What? How would you manage your stock if you were not the CEO of this company? I'd be buying more. All right, why? We're just getting started. This is an enormous opportunity. We're gonna be the most aggressive junior explorer in Mexico this year. And that's gonna allow us to execute on our strategy of exploring ahead of executing the option to become a producer in the near term. A near term producer? Near term producer of a district scale opportunity with high grades of silver and gold. So to get there, you guys have to execute on what seems like a pretty aggressive option. You know, you've gotta bring in about $40 million uh, in the next two years over a stage period. Is this something we should be concerned about? Are you, are you gonna be able to do that, do you think? Absolutely not. I think that the more people understand and start to see the results from the property and, and, and come and see the property like you did, they're gonna see that that's an outrageous deal for us. $40 million to buy all the things we need to be a producer in a district in Mexico is a steal. All right, sounds good. <laughs> With business wrapped up, I find myself wanting to learn a bit more about the history of the region. So I decide to head to the place where the local silver trade really began, Copala. Nestled amongst the Sierra Madre Occidental foothills, Copala is an authentic Mexican small town. Twice a week, it's flooded by tourists from Mazatlan's cruise ships, but Oscar Diaz, Beasley's community relations director, takes me there on a quiet day to see the legacy of mining in the region. Aquí a la vuelta? Sí, allá abajo. Muy muy abajo? No. Okay. Let's go to see what the old mine used to be. Okay. Gracias, señora. Okay. okay, there is there is the area where they the 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 miners used to mine, you know, in the past. You can see the structure and some ore is still there from the past. Look at this, look at this. So you can actually see some copper here in situ. This oxidized green material, that's what they would have actually been mining. And it doesn't look like much here, uh, just a small amount, but over a big enough scale, it starts to add up. So they would have been seeing copper here, uh, probably silver and gold as well. And this is just a good indication of the, the sort of things that you can still find in this region. And at the center of the town, San Jose de Copala Church. If you look up, the figure of a miner watches over all those who enter. Well, this church, according with the history, was built over 400 years ago when the Spaniards came to this area. They heard about the, all the, the, the mining potential here. And they came, they came and they, they built this, this church, which is amazing. Lots of history, very, very old church. You can see all the, you know, the materials that they used to build, the wood, the doors, the gates, mm -hmm. you know, with the original metal decorations they, they use. This is fantastic. You know, people here, local people, they, they want to preserve this, not only for tourism or, no, no, they, 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 they are very proud about the, the, the church they have here. The, the mining activity developed this, this town and, and many, many small villages around. Did you get married here? No, no, <laughs> but in a, in a church, the first time I got married, uh, is the same name of the church in Mazatlan, very, very old church too. one-man band, Oscar. Not too bad, huh? This is one of the best site visits I've ever had the chance to go on. I was really impressed, first of all, by Mazatlan, how beautiful it is, how safe it was. 
I was really, really impressed by Wiesla's team that they've put together on the ground, the geologists, Oscar, who showed us around all week. There's very, very rarely an opportunity where the team has put together the right people, the right asset at the right time. And I think we're hitting all of that with Wiesla. And because of that, I'm super happy I invested last year and I'm really looking forward to what these guys pull off over the next few months. This is the, the famous Sinaloa blue jumper shrimp. You don't find this kind of, this size of shrimp if you go to the coast of Guerrero or Oaxaca or Nayarit. So it's exclusive in Sinaloa. As I remember the last super trim season. It was amazing. It was in 2006, 2007. Tons and tons and tons and tons in every boat. Not, not something like that since then. Do you think the future of Mazatlan of Sinaloa is going to be in fishing, or do you think it's going to be in in mining, in tourism, in these other industries? I think in other Sinaloa? industries, absolutely. Yeah, I think mining is going to be. Uh, a major activity here in, in this area. Yeah, silver, gold. Silver, gold, copper, who knows? But uh, mining is going to be a very, very, very important industry. Has it, has it changed how local people live? How, uh, I mean? A little bit, you know, but we have our own uh, habits and values, but uh, we, we are welcome every people coming from, from other countries. Uh, of course, that helped the economy of Mazatlan people. Yeah. yeah, because you guys bring your money, your investments here, yeah. which is good for us.